Hey, good to see you back for part two of the Building Interactive Maps project, where we're building a map of English Football League championship team data, plotting it on a UK map and allowing users to kind of click and interact with it. So in part one, I covered scraping Wikipedia data to get the information about the football team. So you can click the suggested link if you've missed that video. But if you're here for part two, which is to focus on using Google Maps APIs to get the distance between two locations and other useful information. So let's get started with the Google Maps APIs. Okay, so with part two of our project, we've already got the list of 24 football teams, but we need to get information about their location, as in their coordinates, and also maybe information between two different points on a map. So how far is it from Nottingham to Bournemouth, say? I need to know that so I can render that information to the user on the interactive map. So to achieve getting this information, I'm gonna use the Google Maps API. Before I dive into how we go about that, I just wanna briefly pause and say, what is an API? Now, in layman terms, it stands for Application Programming Interface. In essence, it's a way to speak to other applications and get useful information back. So for Google Maps, essentially, we are sending it a request or a query to their API that kind of sits at the front of their Google Maps application. We say, can we have some information about distance between two points? And provided you followed their request required structure for an API, you know, giving it the right origin, the right destination, and any other keywords, you will then return the response typically in JSON format. If you do want a more detailed video overview. I'll link to one I found from another YouTuber um, right here. That's just a three minute overview and gives you a really good idea. But moving on. So what you want to do is navigate to developers.google.com forward slash maps forward slash documentation. And this gives you um, a lot of information. It can seem overwhelming, but I'll tell you what you want to look at is a specific API. So they've got loads of different APIs for different products, you know, for maps, for street view, for directions. We're going to use that one I just mentioned, Directions API, getting directions between two points. And if you click on it, it will take you to a whole heap of documentation about how it all works, how you query it, how you use keywords. The first thing you will need to do is actually sign up for an account. Now, I've mentioned in the notes here that unfortunately you do have to create a billing account, so give it a debit credit card, which does seem scary at first, but Unless you're going to be using these APIs, you know, thousands and thousands of times, you're not going to rack up any costs because when you sign up, they give you $300 credit. And I've done, I think, at least about a thousand requests to this API and it's cost me like something ridiculous like 50p, right? But it doesn't cost because it's coming up my credit that they gave me for free. So be wary, but obviously it's low risk. Okay, so once you've set up um, your billing or project account with Google Maps, you want to head over to what is called your, your Google Cloud Platform Console. And it will look something like this. And if you've generated a key, just simply like a way of authenticating with the API to, to know that it's you and not some other hacker, you know, trying to abuse the system. You'll see here that you have one for like Google Maps API key. And that's what I named it. I've personally restricted it to the directions API. Um, and here is the key, which you can copy. That's literally all you need to know. Um, and then you can start getting into the code. So let's jump over to that now. Now that we have the key, we want to just build a function to say, get the directions between point A and point B and get give me back all of the useful information that this API can give. And again, like in the previous video uh, with Wikipedia and accessing the content of that web page, we're again going to use the requests package and we'll build a simple function. And it firstly will capture the API key. So I've hard coded mine in here. I will have changed it because this is supposed to be super secure, so don't share it with anyone. There's then an endpoint, right? So to speak to the API, like the base URL is just called an endpoint. That's what you speak to. Um, to know what that endpoint is, if you go over to your directions API documentation, um, which can be found in the same site that you signed up, there's so much that you can read, but you'll see a directions API request takes the following form, HTTPS, blah, 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 directions. So that is our endpoint. You'll see we've captured it, hard-coded it here. Um, this bit we've tacked on at the end, JSON, question mark, you'll see represents the output format. So generally recommended to be JSON. You could, if you had a particular preference, use XML instead of JSON there. And then after the question mark come 
a set of parameters. And so we build that with this variable nav request. And the parameters that we are going to give it are three. So origin, where are you coming from with your directions? Your destination, where you want to get directions to. And the key, which is obviously your API key. And we simply concatenate those two strings to build our like total request string. And then employ request package to get the information and the JSON response from that API. Capture it in the response variable and return that to the user. Now I will say, um, while we're on this topic, those parameters, again, there is a lot of information about what parameters are required, origin, destination, and key. And there's also optional things. So let's say you were kind of really using this in detail and wanted to only take the bicycle or walk or drive or have multiple checkpoints that you want to pass through. These are all achievable, just like you do with the app. Um, but through code. So you can feel free to look at that in your own time. Um, now that we've built that function, I'm going to try it out. So I'm going to capture my directions of Nottingham, where I live now, to Bournemouth, my hometown. I run that. It sent the, the request to the API. It's captured the response in this variable. And what you'll see is if I just return that whole thing, Whoa, that's a lot of information. Again, it all becomes clear reading the documentation. After some digging, I figured out how you could get, I don't know, the distance. And so it's under your roots, the leg of your journey, then the distance and its value. And that returns the distance between Nottingham and Bournemouth in metres, 313,000, 14,000. So now that we've captured all of this information, you can see that there's a lot that is not useful. We need to think again about what is going to be useful for our map. And there's essentially two critical pieces of information. When we've got the map in front of us, we want to be able to plot the location of the football teams accurately on the map. And for that, we need coordinates. And the second thing is when we want to click on the data points on the map, we want to return to the user information about what the club is, what the stadium is, but also how far away it is from the origin. And so we need what we've just seen a second ago is the distance from origin to endpoint. And so to make sure our code is nice and modular and can be tested separately and they don't kind of interdepend on each other, I wrote three separate functions that all achieve separate things. So we've got the get distance function, which kind of takes that big response from our API and navigates down the, the dictionary to find the distance. And we have the same um, thing for getting latitude and longitude. So we navigate down through the dictionary, find end location, and we take the end locations, latitude and longitude, and return that as a tuple. And one other function, which I'll come on to in a second. So we'll just run that get distance. As you've seen, it's 313,000 meters. Get latitude and longitude, here we go. 50 minus one, cool. Um, but you'll notice that is not very human readable. So this is quite often the thing you're, when you're writing a set of functions, you can get a reasonable response, but there might be some polishing, some cleaning, tidying up that you need to do. And this is an example of one, right? That presented to a user on our map is hard to understand such a large figure. Um, so I just wrote a really simple function to convert meters to kilometers and round up to the nearest kilometer. Um, so we say uh, the distance over a thousand and take the ceiling of it. So even if it was like it went to 2.1 kilometers, it would round it up to three. I'm sorry, we run that and we see 313,988 is turned into 314. So that is essentially our suite of functions for pulling the information we need about our football championship teams. So let's actually apply it. So if you recall the last time, um, scraping the club data from Wikipedia. I put this in the Python package EFL mapping as I have done with these little helper functions. So I'll quickly import that run, check that the data is there. You can see we've got the clubs and the stadiums. And so you can start to use the functions that we've built previously to automate getting these latitudes, these longitudes, these distances. So all I've done here is say, here's my origin in Nottingham and I'm going to create a dictionary of like, the stadiums and then within that have 
the various useful bits of information. I get the data frame of the clubs and stadiums as above. And then for each stadium and club, I kind of iterate over them to form our query and then to use the functions to get directions and so on. So I say for the stadium and club in DF Stadium and DF Club. So for example, saying Oakwa Stadium and Barnsley, we feed that into our get directions and capture it. We get the distance, we get the latitude and longitude, and we feed it back to our dictionary that's kind of collated this information. So it'll say Oakwa has a distance of this, a latitude of this, a longitude of this. To make it a bit easier, we'll bring that back into a data frame um, using pandas from dict, which just takes a dictionary and converts it into a data frame. And then we merge it with our original data frame, which just is clubs and stadiums, to tack on the distance, latitude, and longitude. And so we'll run that, and you'll see it making iterating over the various clubs. So each one is a separate API query that's going on now. So we're going to make 24 separate requests. I found that it can be like faster or slower, um, which is interesting. I don't know if it's just my laptop being really slow. Um, so that's done. And now because we've returned it as DF, let's just quickly hit run. And now we not only have the club and stadium, but the distance away from Nottingham and their locations, which we can plot on a map. So that has been part two of the building interactive maps Python project, um, where I've just covered how to use Google Maps directions API to get distances between points and get also coordinates, so latitudes and longitudes. In the next video, it will be the third and final part of our data collection phase. And this will focus on getting information about how we can build a map of the UK accurately and to scale so that we can then work with that data to plot on the locations of our football teams on top of this map. And we'll use that, use GeoPandas to achieve that. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you learned something from this video, whether it's about working with APIs, Google Maps, or just about the approach to kind of modularizing functions. Hopefully you got some nugget of value out of it. If you did, please let me know in the comments, hit like and subscribe and stick around for more on this topic. Cheers, guys.